In this video, I'm going to explain the purpose behind the independent two-sample t-test, and I'm also going to explain how we go about undertaking this test in practice. So first of all, what is this test actually about? So the idea is that we have, let's say, one population, let's call it population one, and then we have another population, let's call it population two. And in each of these populations, we can suppose that there is some sort of population mean measure or something, so mu1 and mu2 respectively. So in the independent two-sample t-test, what we're essentially testing here is the null hypothesis that the mean of population 1 is equal to the mean of population 2. And this is against the alternative, which is that the mean of population 1 mu1 does not equal the mean of population 2 mu2. But the problem in general in statistics is that we don't actually have these measures mu1 and mu2, so we have to go ahead and estimate these. So the idea is that we take a sample from population 1, and in sample 1 we calculate the sample mean, and we'll call that x bar 1. And similarly, we only have a sample from population 2, and then we can calculate the sample mean of that second sample, and we call it x bar 2. And it happens to be the case that we can then form a t-statistic, which is equal to x bar 1 minus x bar 2, all divided through by the grand standard deviation, s12, which I'm going to explain in a minute, times the square root of 2 over n, where implicitly here I've assumed that both of the sample sizes are equal to n, and so they're the same sample size and they're both equal to n. So it happens to be the case that under the null hypothesis being true, this t statistic here has a sampling distribution which is described by a t distribution with sorry, 2n minus 2 degrees of freedom. In order to explain the mechanism behind this particular t-test, we need to first of all explain what S12 is. And S12, or squared, is defined as the sum of S1 squared plus S2 squared, all divided through by 2, where S1 squared and S2 squared are the unbiased estimators of the population variance, which are actually respectively the sample standard deviations of sample 1 and sample 2. So you can sort of think of S12 squared as the average um, of the two samples' um, variances, essentially. So S12, not all squared, but just S12 on its own, is just obviously just the square root of those two things. And although it's still not exactly analogous to an average, you can still sort of think about it in that sense. Essentially, it's a sort of grand standard deviations across the two samples. So let's first of all draw what a sort of t distribution looks like. And as I've sort of mentioned before, a t distribution is kind of like a normal distribution, except it in general has fatter tails. And those fatter tails actually re reflect the fact that we are that much less certain when we're dealing in a t distribution than when we're dealing in a normal distribution. And that comes here because we're actually estimating the um, population variances. Okay, so this t distribution is centered about zero. How can it be the case that we would actually reject the null hypothesis using this particular test statistic? Well, if there is a big difference between the two individual sample means, then that can result in a t statistic which is either very high, so it's somewhere up to the right here, or it can be very low, it can be negative, if x bar 1 is actually less than x bar 2. So this has to be big when compared to S12. So if we get a value of t which is either very large or very small, then remember that this t distribution we've drawn here is essentially the t under the null hypothesis being true. This is the sampling distribution under H0. And hence, if we get a value of t which is very high or very low, it is very unlikely that we would have got that t if the null hypothesis was true. And then, and only then in those circumstances, will we reject the null hypothesis. And I should stress another couple of things about this particular test. One of the assumptions of this particular test is that in both populations, they have the same variance. So there is the same sigma squared across both of the two different populations. Another assumption is that there is an independence between these two samples. Uh, and we can assume that essentially there is no correlation between x1 bar and x2 bar. 
So those are the two assumptions which we need to um, place in order to carry out this particular statistical test. If either of these um, aren't true, then there are other types of statistic which we can use. Um, but in the event that these two assumptions are upheld, we can use this particular test, which is known as the independent two-sample t-test, when the two different populations have the same variant.